Hi, everyone. Uh, we're continuing today on our series through Ordinary Heroes, and today we're looking at Jeremiah. Now, I'm sure you have good days and bad days in life, and um, sometimes the bad days really make an impact upon our lives. But when I've been looking at the life of Jeremiah, I get the impression almost that his entire life is really one bad day. So many things potentially could have gone so wrong in his life and ministry. But then having thought about it a bit more, and when we scratch beneath the surface, we see that this was an amazing person of God who was called by God to be a prophet to the nations. And he answered that call, and he fulfilled that call, even when facing opposition all of the time. And I find him, as I've been reflecting upon Jeremiah, I, I find him as inspirational, as someone who can be really of encouragement to us. He remained steadfast in obedience to God right throughout his entire time of being a prophet to the nation. And even when facing all of the time, people who mocked him and ridiculed him all of the time. And as we go into our, our time together, focusing upon Jeremiah, may we be inspired, I have been inspired, in terms of our call to follow Jesus Christ that we will not give up in the face of opposition and ridicule, but that we will stand strong in faithfulness to Jesus. And so we're going to read, um, looking at the life of Jeremiah. Let's start from the beginning. Jeremiah chapter 1, and we're going to read the first 10 verses of Jeremiah chapter 1. It's a message today that I've entitled, A Steadfast Spirit. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1. The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests of Anathoth, in the territory of Benjamin. The word of the Lord came to him in the thirteenth year of the reign of Josiah, son of Amon, king of Judah, and through the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah down to the fifth month of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of Israel went into exile. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm only a child. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Let's stop there. Jeremiah was born at a time when Judah was going through an evil stage in its life and history. Judah was born, uh, Jeremiah was born in a time of Manasseh, who was the king of Judah at that time, and he was an evil king. And then it was 20 years about after his birth that Josiah was now reigning over Judah. And Josiah was regarded as a godly king. And during his reign, there was a kind of spiritual reformation that took place uh, during his reign. And it's within this time that Jeremiah was called by God to be a prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah's ministry lasted for more than 40 years over this time and through the reigns of the last five kings of Judah. And when you read about these accounts of the kings, these last kings of Judah, and you can read about it 
in the end of 2 Kings and at the end of 2 Chronicles, you get the impression the accounts are so short and abrupt and to the point, you get the impression that the pace is quickening in terms of the nation heading towards judgment. The people were going to be judged because of their sins. They were like a runaway train out of control heading for disaster. Judgment was inevitable. In Jeremiah's world, therefore, looked something like this in those days, at that time. And so he started his ministry in the time of King Josiah, and Josiah's reign can be summarized there in 2 Chronicles 34, verse 2. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Under Josiah, there was a period of spiritual reformation, a period that took place, and it was acted as a kind of cleaning up operation, a mopping up operation from the previous kings who were so evil, Manasseh and Amon. And so this reformation uh, acted as a sort of a cleaning up from those periods of evil over the nation of Judah. And a revival had begun, but it did not last for long. And so we see under King Josiah, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And he was regarded as the last king in the line of David, who walked in godly ways. After his death, there is a foreboding uh, nature, a foreboding sense of doom that arises over the nation. Judgment was coming. It was imminent. And the people of Judah seemed to be blissfully ignorant of the fact that judgment was coming their way. Like a giant tsunami wave, it's coming. This judgment in the form of the terrifying and wicked Babylonians. They were coming, but the people of Judah just seemed to ignore it. And they ignored the warnings of Jeremiah, the prophet. And then we have King Geo Ahaz. And his reign is described in 2 Kings 23, verse 32. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, his God. He was the son of Josiah, and he only reigned for three months. During this time, the nation came under the influence, the domination of the Egyptians. In fact, there was a, it was a time of political turmoil on a global scale. Assyria, the, the great nation that was dominating, was on the decline. And now Babylon, Babylon, the Babylonians were on the rise in terms of ascendancy over that part of the world. And in between this time of transition... Egypt, a former world power, was grabbing what it could in this time of turmoil, grabbing what it could before Egypt would eventually fall away to the Babylonians. And in this brief period of time, they had ascendancy over Judah. And so Pharaoh Necho, at that time, he deposed Jehoahaz and he exiled him to Egypt. And he replaced him with his brother, Jehoiakim, who's next on our list. And you can see that his reign is summarized in Second Chronicles 36, verse 5. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, his God. Jehoiakim persecuted the prophets. And he is the object of scathing words of judgment from Jeremiah. After the Egyptian, um, Egyptians were defeated by the Babylonians at Carchemish in 605 BC, Jehoiakim transferred allegiance from being with the Egyptians to now being with the Babylonians. But then he later rebelled against the Babylonians and joined himself again with the Egyptians. So he was going backwards and forwards in this time of turmoil. Well, Nebuchadnezzar, had enough 
with Jehoiakim. And he sent an army to capture him. And they captured him. And they were going to take him to exile in Babylon. But at some stage before he got to exile, being exiled, he died. And then we have King Jehoiachin. And his reign is, is summarized there in Second Chronicles 36 verse 9. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord his God. King Jehoiachin. He reigned for only three months. And then he was exiled to Babylon. And he was taken into captivity along with all the articles of the um, temple in Jerusalem. The temple was stripped uh, bare of its furniture. And some of the royal family, including uh, the mother, the queen mother, were taken to exile, including some of the high officials. They too were exiled. In fact, in this period of time, thousands of Jews were exiled from Judah and Jerusalem in particular, all the way to Babylon, including people you will be aware of, Daniel and Ezekiel. And then we come to the last king, easy to remember, Zed, Zedekiah. And his reign is summarized in Second Chronicles 36 verse 12. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord his God. And this king, along with the people and even the priests, became even more unfaithful to God. And it was seen in their behavior. Zedekiah rejected Jeremiah the prophet and he looked to Egypt for help. Again, he had rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and Nebuchadnezzar captured him and captured the city of Jerusalem. And at this time, he sent Zedekiah into exile, and he destroyed Jerusalem and the temple, in particular, in 587 BC. Sorry about the quick history lesson. But this is the world that Jeremiah lived in. Throughout all of this time, he was proclaiming a message of judgment and a call to repentance. But the people were not listening to him. They had rejected the word of God. They had failed to keep the covenant. And now the Lord sent against them the Babylonians in fulfillment of the words of Jeremiah, the prophet. Here's an example from the book of Jeremiah itself, chapter 25, verse 8 to 11. Therefore the Lord Almighty says this, Because you have not listened to my words, I will summon all the peoples of the north and my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, declares the Lord. And I will bring them against this land and its inhabitants and against all the surrounding nations. I will completely destroy them and make them an object of horror and scorn and an everlasting ruin. I will banish from them the sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of bride and bridegroom, the sound of millstones and the light of the lamp. This whole country will become a desolate wasteland and these nations will serve the king of Babylon 70 years. And this was basically the message Jeremiah gave to the people over his 40 years of ministry in Judah at that time. His preaching seemed to have no impact at all, except to raise opposition from those who heard him. And yet he remained faithful to God and to God's calling upon his life. I find this really challenging. Do we remain faithful to God when we go through the tough times? And it feels as though everything and everyone is against us. Do you remain faithful to God? Jeremiah was steadfast, unwavering, 
loyal in his response to God. He had a steadfast spirit. And so we come back to, to Jeremiah chapter 1. And we see this um, expressed in different ways. So in verses 4 to 6 of Jeremiah 1, we see he was steadfast in responding to the call of God. Jeremiah was chosen by God to be a prophet to the nation. And he was steadfast in responding to that call. He was young when he was called possibly around 20 years of age. And Josiah's reforms had begun, so he began his ministry in the midst of these spiritual reforms that were taking place. And when Jeremiah was called by God, at first he was reluctant, but he soon accepted God's call and he responded to it. And very quickly he saw the superficial nature of the reforms that were taking place around him in Judah. He was not impressed by what he saw. And neither would he back down when he spoke up against the things that he saw around him and people started to oppose him, even when he was such a young man. And thinking about this, in crisis times, we often look for a program to save us, but God is looking for a person. Maybe you, to step up and fill the gap. Jeremiah initially reacted, Me, God? Who? Me? I'm the wrong person. It can't be me, God. I'm too young. That was his response. But God provided for him. And we know that when God calls, he enables that person to do the task that he has called that person to do. And then we see in verse 7 that he was steadfast in proclaiming the word of God. Even in times when the people grabbed him and put him in prison or put him in a dungeon, even when he was dropped into a, a well to die, he was always concerned about getting the message out, even writing it down, sometimes using poetry to get the message across to the people. And the message was pretty direct. Here are some of the words from the book of Jeremiah. You have sinned. Your hearts are desperately wicked. You have turned to idols. Be appalled, O heavens, at what you see when you look at these people. Be appalled, O heavens. And this faithful prophet Jeremiah consistently exposed the false religion of the people of that time. This calling upon his life was no kind of feel-good, cruisy, popularity contest type of calling. He was called to confront the wickedness, the sin in God's people. To confront lies, corrupt leadership, false prophets. To confront the wickedness that was all around him. God had called him to do this. And Jeremiah proclaimed all of, the, all of these things against the people of Judah. And one of the visual aids in one of the illustrations you read in the book of Jeremiah, the people were likened to spoiled loincloth, to dirty underwear. Something that was once personal and close, but now ruined and hidden far away, useless. That's my people, says the Lord. I drew them to myself, but they have become corrupted. And you can read more about that in chapter 13 of Jeremiah. We see next in verse 8. He was steadfast 
as a result of being protected by the presence of God. In verse 8, do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you. Now, how many times in the Bible have we heard words like that? Joshua immediately comes to mind. Many times where God reaffirmed, reassured Joshua and the people that he called of his divine presence and enabling so that we will be strong and courageous. And the message was the same for Jeremiah. Nothing had changed. Jeremiah was compelled to deliver an unpopular message. And he needed to be brave. He needed to be courageous. He was the voice of God speaking to a sinful and dying nation. And this was his destiny throughout his lifetime. To say again and again to the people of Judah that you were doomed. That you were under the righteous judgment of God because of your sin. This message from God was like fire in his bones. He describes it like that in chapter 20, verse 9. And even when he tried not to speak, to suppress the word of God within him, the message burnt its way out of him. He couldn't suppress the word of God from within him. There was probably no other prophet like Jeremiah who had such a great sense of compulsion and who attracted so much opposition to his message. The word of God, like a fire burning within. I'm challenged myself. How we need today that divine compulsion to be speaking out the message of Jesus Christ, to be living out the love of Jesus Christ, and to be doing it all in the name of Jesus Christ. That divine compulsion, the word of God burning like a fire in your soul. And then finally we have, in verses 9 and 10, he was steadfast, having been touched with the power of God. Jeremiah received power that enabled him to have influence on the nation. We see in verse 10, power to tear down and destroy, but also power to build up and plant. Jeremiah seems to have been a person of great personal courage. He faced constantly misunderstandings from people. He faced physical hardship. And he faced suffering, even from the sense that the people that he lived amongst and that he spoke to and ministered to were a people under the judgment of God. And yet also, in the book of Jeremiah, we have a message of hope that keeps popping up to the surface. Here's an example, Jeremiah 29, verse 10 to 14. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord. And will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Jeremiah prophesied in a time of great national disaster. 
and in a time of great uncertainty. And in some ways, there are similar points that we can connect with with us today, in our world today, whether it's COVID-19, the restrictions, the lockdown, the financial pressures that are coming upon people, its impact on a global scale, as well as a lot of other things happening at a global scale. It seems to be that we're in unsettled times. And the message that Jeremiah gives us is, yes, one of judgment, but also one of hope. Hope for the future. Many people consider Jeremiah a bit of a crazy man. A bit of a crazy person. And yet God was telling him not to give up. But be steadfast. To believe that there will come a time of hope, of deliverance, of salvation. And as I close this, friends, we are called today to believe that God has a plan for each one of us, both on an individual, personal level, corporately as a church, as we enter into new, a new season as believers together, and on a far wider scale as well. God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. Let us therefore be steadfast like Jeremiah, always trusting in God, no matter what circumstances we find ourselves in, and no matter what opposition we may be facing in life at this time. Let us be steadfast followers of Jesus Christ. Amen.